Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Clark and I'm going to show you how to make this adorable emoji with hearts. And you can write your own questions and if people answer it correctly, it's coded so that the pixels will pop up as they answer. So if you want to get this exact template and follow along with this exact picture, click on the link in the description. But this video will also help you if you have your own picture that you want to learn how to code. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is come up to the percentage and set it to 75% so that I can see everything on one screen. The next step is to click on these boxes and write your answers. And you do that just by clicking and typing. And then afterwards you can select and change the font, color, all of that. You can resize these to make your question box bigger, smaller, etc. Go ahead and write your questions and you're also going to answer them. Now we're going to talk about the actual coding. We are only going to write nine codes. We're going to write one for each of these answer boxes here. And when you write the code, you're telling the computer two things. You're going to tell the computer the box that you're talking about. So this one, or this one, or this one. And you're also going to tell the computer what needs to be in the box in order for the colors to pop up. In other words, you're telling the computer the answer to your question. So for me, it's nine, eight, February, etc. Now, when I say that you need to tell the computer what box you're talking about, every single box in a spreadsheet has a name. And you name that box by telling the computer the column that it's in and the row that it's in. So let's look at this box. It is in column B, and you can see of all these columns, it shades it a little darker so you can see it. Column B, and then let's look over here at the rows. This box is rows four, five, six, and seven. But when you're naming it, you use the first number. In this case, that's four. So this box is column B, row four. This box is column B, row eight. This box is column B, row 12. And this box is column B, row 16. So that's the column and row of the box. And then you're gonna tell the computer the answer to your question. With that being said, let's look at the actual code. It's all the stuff that I was just talking about with a couple of symbols that you'll just have to type in. It is right here. I recommend writing it down on a piece of paper. Custom formula is equals dollar sign column, dollar sign row equals answer. So for example, the code for this box is going to be equals dollar sign B, dollar sign four equals nine. The code for this one will be equals dollar sign B, dollar sign eight equals eight. And the code for this box will be equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals February. And if your answer is a word like February, you have to put quotes around it. And I'll show you that in a sec. Let's go ahead and write our first code. I'm going to click on the box I actually want to code. That's very important. This is the one I'm coding. Next, I'm going to open the coding window. Come up to format. If you don't have this window, click here or menu, I should say. Open conditional formatting. We will keep this window open the whole time, but if you lose it, that's how you get back to it. These are the different details we're gonna put in. I always start at the bottom, which is this. I just need to tell the computer what color I want my box to turn, and I am going to pick colors from the picture. Click on the paint bucket. I wanna do the darkest red color, and they're usually up here under custom colors and it looks like that one. But if you're ever not sure, you can always click on the picture and compare. I would click on this paint bucket just to see. It's the fourth one in. But before I come back over here, it's good practice to always click on the box you're actually coding and just make sure that one's always selected. Now that I've looked to see where that red is, I can be sure that I have the right one. I'm going to click on it. I'm telling the computer, I want this box to turn darkest red. Now I'll write the code. Come to format cells if, and you're going to scroll to the very last option, custom formula is. A box will appear beneath. That's where you'll write that code we were just talking about. So I'm going to tell the computer the name of this box so it knows which one. So column B, row four, and that a nine needs to be in that box in order for this code to activate. 
equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign four, that's the row, equals nine, that's the answer. Keep this window open, but I'm going to close it just to show you that the code is technically done. I told the computer if there's a nine in that box, turn it dark red, and if there's you know something else in it, don't. So it technically works. And that's all I'm doing is coding that box. Now to make the red pop up in the picture, all I have to do is add the dark reds to the existing code. So I'm just kind of bringing them along for the ride. And that is what this last step up top here is for. It's called apply to range. It already is applying the code or making the code work for B4 to B7, which is this big red box. And now I just want to add in the dark reds from the emoji. To do that, I click on this window, slide this over to where it's not in the way, but you can still see this box here. And I'm going to select the dark reds from the picture. But I need to hold down a button on my computer. That button is control. It's usually at the bottom, bottom left hand uh, of your keyboard. And the reason I'm holding down control is because it lets me keep clicking on pixels without losing the earlier ones from the group. If I didn't hold down control every time I clicked, it would delete or like it would unselect what I had before. If you have a Mac, you can click uh, hold down command instead. I want to make sure that 9 box or the B4 to B7 is also still there. If it's not, you need to click on it and include it in your code. So once I have everything selected, I can lift up on control and I need to do three steps to finish. I need to hit OK on the range. Then I need to come here and hit done on the code. And then step three is very easy to forget, but it's very important. While everything is still selected, I need to come up to the paint bucket and click reset. And now I'm done. Since everything's selected, click anywhere else. And now let's come up and test it. Click on this box and hit delete or backspace. The pixels disappear. Put the answer back in, but you do have to click off of it in order for it to work. And there we go. I'm going to delete the nine because I need my picture to be disappearing in front of my eyes. I don't want to be coding the same pixels over and over again. I'm going to do this whole thing again. Click on the box you actually want to code. So that's the eight box now. And there's no code yet for it, so there's nothing here, but I'm going to click add another rule. And it opens up the same box or same details again. I'll start by choosing my color. I want to do some of this golden yellow. Let me click on it and figure out which yellow it is real quick. It's the first custom color. Great. Clicking back on the box, I'm actually coding. And now I can start. Come down to the paint bucket and pick that color I was just looking at. Next, I'll write my code. Custom formula is, and I'll tell the computer the column and row of this box and that there needs to be an eight in it. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column. Dollar sign H, that's the bot or row, sorry. Equals eight, that's the answer. The code is done. And all I need to do now is add some of the golden yellows from the emoji so that they can come along for the ride. Click on apply to range, slide this window over where you can see the picture and you can see the eight box. Hold down control and start clicking on some of the pixels in the picture. If you have several that are next to each other, you can click with one finger and use like your index finger to drag down and select a bunch in a row. So that can help you speed up a little, but it's kind of fun when the pixels are spaced out anyways. I'm gonna select oh, around half, maybe a little less, and then lift up on control and do your three steps. Try to remember what that third step is. Hit okay on the range, done on the code and reset the paint bucket. Now click anywhere else and come up to your eight and we'll test it out. Pixels disappear and then let's put in both answers so we should have our full picture. Great, delete the answers, keep the codes though, they're still there. Come down to your next box that you want to code. I am going to do that lightest yellow now. So I'll click add another rule and I'll start at the bottom and pick the color. It looks like it's this one here. I'm going to click on the color I want, and now I'll write my code telling the computer the column and row of that yellow box over there, and that it needs to have the word February in it. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign 12, that's the row, equals February. And I want to show you something. See how it turns white? That's 
great because it shows me if it doesn't work. It's good to know. February is a word, and if your answer is a word, you have to do one extra step. You have to put quotation marks around it. You do not have to do that if it is a number. It's going to turn yellow now to show me that it's correct. Now we'll come up to apply to range, and we're going to select some light yellows from the picture. If you click on one you didn't mean to click on, well, like that, that's no big deal because it's just another yellow, but if you really don't want it in there, just click on it again. So if you accidentally clicked on like that, we don't want that to be yellow. So we would just click on it again and it'll take it out of your code. I'm taking about half of these lightest yellows. Now I lift up and I'll do my three steps. Hit OK on the range, done on the code, and reset that paint bucket. Test it out. Looking good. So at this point, I have six colors left, and I have six um, questions left. So if you've been doing the same colors as me, and we split up a couple, we're now at a perfect point where we have six colors and six questions. So from here on out, every question that I do, I'll do the entire color. So we have three different yellows and we have a black and two reds. I am going to do my next box, clicking on the box I actually want to code, and I come over and click add another rule. I'm going to make this one black and I want to show you another little trick you can do. So come down to the paint bucket and I'm making it black. So this one or that one, they're the same. And that's great, that's what I want, but now you can't read it. So Something you can also do, you always have this option as part of your code, you can actually change the font color too. I usually don't, but if it's a dark color, I can change my font color as well. And that's now part of the code. All right, let's write our code. Column and row of that Mercury box. So we have equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign 16, that's the row. Mercury is a word, so we put it in quotation marks, just like dialogue in a book. It stayed black, so we know that the code is working. Click Apply to Range, slide this over so you can still see your Mercury box. And something I want to let you know is that uh, it's normal to make a lot of mistakes when you're starting out with this. I certainly did, so stick with it. It will get a lot easier. And I do have a video called Pixel Art Mistakes, Common Mistakes and How to Fix Them. It's right underneath here, and it's in my Pixel Art playlists. So that will help you with beginner mistakes. Lift up on control, do your three steps. Okay, done, and reset that paint bucket. There's a the smile. I have five colors left, three yellows and two reds, and I have five questions. So I'm gonna do a color per question. I'm going to speed up the video now, and we'll check in at the end and see how it looks.
All right, when we're all finished, we can click through here and see that the codes are popping up on the right and that they're all there so you could open it up if you needed to change anything. If you left any pixels behind, watch this video. It's pretty short, but it'll show you kind of how to fix any common mistakes. Let's go ahead and put our answers in and see how it looks. All right, and there's our finished product. So let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have fun with this project and stick with it because it is totally worth it once you learn how.